Hi there, my lovelies. So there are a lot of people with gluten allergies, as I'm sure you know. I've gotten some comments from you guys, and I also have some people that are really close to me with gluten allergies, one of which is my sister's fiance. Now they're getting married in a couple of weeks, which is really exciting, and they've asked me if I would do the dessert bar for their wedding which has left me with the task of finding a flour substitute that tastes great in desserts. Because if you have a gluten allergy, you know how difficult it can be to find desserts that taste really good. So for those of you that have a gluten allergy or know people that do, this will be a great video for you. So let's get started. For the wedding, one of the desserts I'm gonna be making are mini cupcakes. Now to cater to everyone's palate, I'm gonna be making a standard vanilla, chocolate, and carrot cake cupcake but then I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with the frosting. Here's the gluten-free flour that we're gonna try today. I've heard really good things, so I'm excited to give it a try. It says it's cup for cup, but we're gonna give it a try and see how it compares to regular flour. First, I'm gonna show you how to make a classic vanilla cupcake using our gluten-free flour. So to my mixer, I'm gonna add some oil and my sugar and mix that together. Then I'm gonna add my vanilla extract, baking powder, egg, and a pinch of salt to my mixer. And then I'm gonna mix that for about 15 seconds. Then I'm gonna add my gluten-free flour. It looks exactly like flour, surprisingly. Now I'm gonna to continue to mix and add my milk. You could also use almond milk if you want to make this cupcake dairy-free. Make sure to scrape down the sides of the bowl all the way to the bottom and give it another mix. Now I'm gonna place my batter into a piping bag. The texture of the batter is a little bit gummier, I wanna say, than regular batter. So that's the first difference I'm seeing. We'll see what happens in the oven. Here's a trick I learned. Take a bench scraper and push your batter down towards the bottom of the bag to make it nice and clean and so you get all of the batter. Then I'm gonna add some purple paper liners to my baking pan, cut a hole in my piping bag, and pipe my batter into my tin. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit gummier as you can see. So just continue with all the cupcakes. Then I'm gonna pop them in the oven at 350 degrees for 25 minutes. One of the main colors for my sister's wedding is purple. So I'm gonna make a blackberry jam cream cheese frosting to go with our vanilla cupcakes. So while those are in the oven, let's get started on the frosting. So first I'm gonna make my blackberry jam. To a food processor or blender, blend up some blackberries. If you wanna keep the seeds in your jam, then skip this next step. But I'm gonna run my blackberries through a sieve to get out all the seeds. Then I'm going to take the blackberry juice and add it to a saucepan with some sugar and lemon juice and cook my mixture for about five minutes until it's reduced in size. You'll know it's done when all the sugar is dissolved and the color will turn a dark purple and it will thicken up just slightly. Then I'm going to add my liquid to a bowl and place it in the refrigerator to completely cool and thicken up more. Now I'm going to add a fun twist on a classic cream cheese frosting. To my clean mixing bowl, I'm going to add some cream cheese. Now here's the twist. I'm going to add some mascarpone cheese and mix until everything is well combined. Then I'm going to add my sugar and mix until everything is well combined. Make sure again to scrape down the sides of the bowl. Once the frosting is done, I'm gonna add half of my frosting to a piping bag fitted with any tip you like. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator to firm up a little bit until I'm ready to use it. That is gonna be the frosting for our carrot cake cupcakes. To the other half of the frosting, I'm gonna add my blackberry jam and mix that all together for the vanilla cupcakes. Again, always make sure to scrape down the sides of the bowl all the way to the bottom and mix one last time before it's ready to use. So I'm gonna add the rest of my frosting to another piping bag fitted with a different piping tip. And I'm gonna add that to the refrigerator for about 30 minutes to let that frosting firm up also. My sister's fiance loves peanut butter and chocolate, so I wanted to incorporate that into the desserts. So I thought for the chocolate cupcakes, we should make a peanut butter cream cheese frosting. So to my clean mixing bowl, I'm adding some cream cheese and softened butter and mixing that together. Then 
Next, I'm going to add some peanut butter and continue to mix. Lastly, I'm going to add in some powdered sugar, but I'm going to add half of it in at a time, so that way it mixes in well with the rest of my ingredients. Then again, scrape down the sides of the bowl and mix again, and then I'm going to add it to another piping bag fitted with my desired tip. Go ahead and place that in the refrigerator to firm up as well. So our cupcakes turned out great. They look beautiful. Now let's tear one apart and see what it looks like. It looks really great, really fluffy and moist. Okay, so let's give them a try and see how they taste. Wow, those are really good. They're just a little bit lighter than regular cupcakes, but it's almost better, it's really nice. If I didn't know that they were gluten-free, I would have no idea. They're so delicious. Yay! I'm so glad we found a flour that works instead of using gluten. I've already made chocolate and carrot cake cupcakes on my channel, so instead of re-showing you how to make those, I'm going to leave the full recipes for all the cupcakes along with the links to those videos in the description box below. Now I'm just going to take my frostings and pipe them onto my cupcakes. I'm using different piping tips and different designs just to add some unique character to each cupcake. I love nuts on my carrot cake, so I'm going to take some finely chopped walnuts and sprinkle them on my frosting. But you don't have to if you're not a big nut person. Or you could do half with nuts and half without. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video and see for yourself if this gluten-free flour makes the cut into your desserts. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so I can continue to post recipes every week. And I'll see you back here next Sunday. Bye my lovelies.